Hello. In this video, we are going to add new thread onto a unthreaded steerer tube. This is part of my Peugeot uh, build, uh, and this uh, specific tube is uh, 118, and uh, it's going to be going onto a MAG uh, 21. Uh, so the original Peugeot Team Grizzly build had a threaded steerer, and uh, I would like to try and make it as uh, original as possible, and um, I've been unable to find a threaded steerer. So I've decided to uh, use the spare one that I've got and uh, we're going to attempt to uh, put some new threading on. Now globally from what I have uh, read uh, this is quite a hard task and um, usually uh, you're only going to use one of these tools which uh, has a die on it for um, adding new threads onto a already threaded steerer tube or just simply chasing uh, the threads. However, uh, I have read a few people say that they've been successful. So uh, since I have the tool, we're going to give it a go. So this is a VAR tool. I believe uh, Cyclus as well as uh, Park make something very, very similar. So what it typically has as is on one side a kind of like a guide where the it will go into the, the steerer and then you'll have this die which uh, you then uh, insert onto this side. And uh, just for a few more details, since this, this is a uh, 118, you'll see it's marked there 26, that's 26 TPI, and uh, you actually have a 60 degree angle, and I believe that's the angle between the uh, the threads. Now the steerer that I have is a little bit too long, so I'm going to need to reduce it. I've kind of done some measurements to have a nice idea of how much I'm going to need of threading on this. It shouldn't be too much, around about that for the headset that I've got now. Uh, I'm going to add on a little bit more so that way I've got a bit of room to maneuver. Uh, I'm also going to get some uh, cutting oil. Uh, some people said that you can just use regular oil, but I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just get some cutting oil uh, for the sake of it. It's not very expensive. So I'm going to take you step by step what I have done uh, to do this, and maybe it's not even going to be possible. Who knows? Uh, just a little thing to add, uh, so this one here had a guide that was missing, I ended up using some um, headset spacers which fit perfectly inside and uh, it's given me a guide. Something else I thought I'd uh, mention that's uh, relatively important. So between uh, steerer tubes, uh, I've got quite a few of them for uh, rock shocks. Uh, the unthreaded ones are thinner and uh, the threaded ones are thicker and that's obviously because there's um, the threading is going to remove some of the material and uh, make the tube um, weaker and you obviously want a strong steerer tube because it's going to have all your weight against it and uh, you definitely don't want this to snap so I did ask uh, online on a retro bike forum and luckily someone mentioned that so I was able to confirm that my one was uh, thick enough to add on threading so this might be one of the earlier models I also noticed uh, some steerer tubes online have a sticker, so that it, although they've been threaded, um, it actually warns not to add on threading below that because the steerer tube is tapered, uh, I'm guessing for weight saving, um, and if you added on threading you're going to make the steerer tube weak at a certain point. Now that might be uh, relevant for uh, other forks uh, so check that your steerer tube has a certain level of thickness I can't really recommend how much but um, I would imagine that you you want it fairly thick so that once you've uh, removed some of the material to add on the threading it's uh, still going to be strong enough to sustain your weight and uh, just to kind of illustrate that uh, you don't notice it right here but just below around about this point here it's slightly thinner than uh, the part that's going up towards here so you could probably add on a tiny bit more threading onto this uh, steerer tube however below this point you're in dangerous territory and uh, you definitely would not want to add on any threading onto this part so first thing we're going to do is cut off the excess part of the tube i have uh, used a, um, a stem and uh, kind of like a space of a clamp uh, to help me or guide. Uh, I don't have the uh, the guide tool and I don't have a tube cutter either. Uh, I don't even know if you can use uh, tube cutters on uh, these thicker steerer tubes that are made out of uh, well, steel. So uh, let's uh, begin our sawing. Well, 
I'm fairly happy with that car, it looks fairly straight. The next step is to um, file down the edges, I think it's called chamfering, chamfering. Uh, I'm no expert. Uh, a little bit like this on uh, this fork right here, which I'm showing. So I fired down uh, the, the end part that I chafed it, and um, now I'm going to put some, uh, well, some cutting oil, and uh, we're gonna see if we can start threading it. Something else uh, I thought I'd mention before I begin, uh, on a lot of the dies, uh, there will be a, a screw, and you'll see one right here. And uh, what that does is, uh, so it spreads open the, the die, and I guess what that does is it dictates the, well, the amount of pressure against the, the tube that you're about to thread, and uh, I guess also the level of uh, the depth of the threading. So I figured at the beginning you want to have it kind of really opened up, and, um, and then when you're going to re-thread again, you can then kind of uh, squeeze it a little bit uh, less so that uh, the threading becomes a little bit deeper. So I've uh, put some um, cutting oil on the threads of the uh, die and also on the tube. I think I'm gonna have to put some along as I uh, progress. So what most people have advised, or at least what I've read, is uh, getting that first part of the threading. So I'm, I'm kind of putting a little bit of pressure on the the um, uh, die and uh, trying to get that first thread and going back and forth and getting a nice clean cut so that way we can start really turning. The uh, first threads were a little bit hard to get so what's happening now is it's removing a very slight amount of material um, it's doing very very shallow threads it's actually turning very easily and so hopefully now what happens is I'm going to back up and um, tighten up that die like I mentioned before and we're gonna make the threads a little bit thicker. Progress is relatively slow. I think I'm going maybe 10 degrees at the time. Um, and then I'm backing up again. I read somewhere to avoid um, avoid uh, turning when it starts to get too hot, um, maybe because of the metal expanding. So uh, as soon as I feel it getting a little bit too hot, I let, I let it cool down and then I restart again. So it looks all right. Uh, I started to thread on this one, the first kind of lock nut. Uh, I think it just needs to be a little bit more chased, but it looks relatively good. So roughly measuring up uh, the headset parts that I've got, um, I think I need to go about half a centimeter deeper and that should be enough for the first lock nut, a kind of spacer if I want one and the top uh, lock nut. Once uh, I'd actually cleaned everything, uh, removed all the particles, it was actually running a lot smoother again. Uh, I think uh, all the little parts were causing a lot, quite a lot of friction. After a bit of uh, chasing and uh, cleaning up the, the threading, uh, I feel like I'm uh, quite happy with uh, the end result. Something that I haven't done yet is um, make kind of like a slit or slot for the, the keyed washer. And the reason for that is I haven't yet purchased a headset. So I don't know what shape uh, it's going to be. Um, if you're going to do that, you probably want to put one of the, the lock nuts all the way down. And um, I've used a file, maybe a Dremel as well, You could, if you're really careful. And uh, then when you're unscrewing it off again, you'll be able to clean up the threading. Even though I don't have a uh, the headset yet, I've installed an old one just to be able to test it out and uh, also demonstrate. So let's um, put this one in. Now I've made it long enough so that um, 
so that eventually I've I've got I can actually pull a keyed washer, but you you get the idea. So to kind of uh, summarize on everything, um, let's say number one, uh, I feel like if I'd sanded down a little bit more on the the top of the stirrer at the beginning, so a large angle, uh, I think that the die would have caught on uh, easier, and um, that first threading would have it would have been easier. It would have uh, because it would have there would have been a larger gradient, and uh, the the die would have just caught on and got a better threading. Number two, uh, use kyne oil. I really do think that it made a, a big a big difference. Uh, number three, take your time. And number four, um, make sure that the the uh, tube and your die isn't overheating. Um, you definitely don't want to damage your expensive tools. Number uh, five, make sure that your quill stem is going to fit in. As mentioned, um, some of these unthreaded steerers are not made to be threaded and uh, it can turn out that the inner diameter of the tube is too small for your quill stem. Number six, if I can do this on my uh, kitchen table, I think anyone can. Um, it was not a really hard um, task, rather it took a long time, maybe three hours in total. I think uh, that's everything pretty much mentioned, um, all the stuff that I learned anyway uh, before doing this. Um, so anyway, thank you for everyone that helped me, uh, and gave me advice, and uh, thank you my friend uh, D for uh, letting me use his tool. Peace out.